Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going to be doing a breakdown for Akaza. A bit old and a bit late to the game, but I thought I'd catch up and cover him anyways, because he's one of my most enjoyable characters to play. I, I don't know if I said that right. I love playing Akaza. He's really, really fun. Um, and he's gotten a bunch of buffs recently, so I guess it's good I didn't do a breakdown before, because he's changed quite a bit and gotten a reasonable amount stronger. Um, overall, I'd say Akaza is kind of like... A ridiculous all-round character. He has, like, good zoning if he wants to keep a distance from people. He has a presence from a distance, which, you know, Demon Slayers... I mean, the... Like, the Demon Slayer corpse, none of the sword characters actually have projectiles. So even being able to throw projectiles is really amazing, but the fact that he's able to combo off of them and do amazing stuff from his projectiles... And he's got really... He's just so powerful. I think his main power is he's so good at being so fast at getting in and out on the opponent. Like, these rapid punches are so good at just, like, randomly being like, doo -doo 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 -doo, boom. I'm starting a huge combo on you, and now you're dying. And combine that with his projectiles, which you can throw at any time, where, you know, that's a really safe way to pressure the opponent from a distance, where he just throws projectiles from all the way over here, like, they're not going to punish it, or he can just super dash in with these. His dash speed is so fast now, so he can just instantly run in, like, the, probably the fastest dash in the game, maybe besides Zenitsu, but it's ridiculously fast, and he has Destructive Death Annihilation, which is, you know, his armored dash in, which is super fast and starts combos. So that's a red combo now, but yeah. I think that's his main strength now, is he's just able to play so quick and ridiculous, jump sidesteps, dash in, do these things, do projectiles, he's so good at controlling space and quickly moving around it. And he he gets really good payoff for it, he has good damage now. So, let's move into all the normal stuff we go into, starting off with his buttons. So, his regular attack string. Full 8 hits, it's reasonably long, but not ridiculously long, so that you never really want to do it. It's honestly a really good attack string, he has a nice slide in it and it goes a decent distance, so he has two hits off this second hit, which is really handy, because a lot of the times, if you want to get like really high damage combos, you want to hit confirm as soon as into your combo as possible. So you can just do two hits in this rapid hitting slide, you can see if it hits, cancel it into special moves, and then start getting a combo that way. And it is just really good to have such an advancing special move, because if the opponent is... Oh, it's a bit hard to demonstrate. But um, if the opponent is trying to push you back, because he has all these slides and cartwheels in it that like launch him forward so far, when the opponent's pushing you back, he really... They have a hard time using the, you know, the guard push to push you away, because you just slide in so far with your cartwheels, and then these rapid punches at the end actually reach really far. They have a disjointed hitbox. So he's got a really good attack string, honestly. I know I don't usually talk about the attack strings that much, but his is really, really handy. It's really good against people pushing him back, and that just super reinforces his ability to control the space, because even if the opponent's pushing you back and trying to make space, you just keep sliding in, and if they do think they can get away, you go for these things, like, oh, they're trying to run away, go for that, and you catch them again for trying to run or walk away or jumping away. You catch them with that, and then they're just dying. They're really dying. <laughs> um, his down combo... Um, nothing too much to talk about, you know, it does more damage than his regular, um, like, straight combo, so if you want to end your combo for, without using special moves or something, if you want to keep it simple, you can do something like that. Like, if you want to end a combo like this with it, because you don't feel like spending any more meter, you just end your combo with a down combo, and then you'll get a good, decent chunk of damage, like 3,800 damage for two bars is really good, and it's just a cheap way of ending your combos, and you get a hard knockdown, but nothing too special to talk about. His up combo... Um, is kind of something to talk about in that it's kind of annoying, unless they've patched it. Here, let me test right now. But the up combo tends to miss a lot. See that kick there that he sweeps the ground with? Because if you're juggling an opponent, when he does that sweep, the opponent isn't on the ground, so the sweep misses, and then the last hit misses for some reason because of landing invincibility, and then it's really awkward, and then you're just standing there. And unless you want to intentionally use that to go for some like weird mix-ups where I have seen some people do stuff like this where you're whiffing and it looks like you're whiffing and then the opponent goes to attack you and punish you for whiffing and then you end up you know hitting them back but yeah that's just a little bit annoying but other than it's a little annoying hitbox nothing too much to talk about with it you're not gonna be using it too often I don't think his aerial attack strings is also nothing too impressive it's actually probably kind of really bad. Um, unlike characters like uh, Sabito or Nezuko or 
even Rui, who have really good um, attack strings in the air where they kind of hit below them a bit. Kaza's hits directly in front of him, so there's no way you're going to hit a grounded opponent with these unless you do it super late. So you're not really going to get them in a combo unless you like go it super late, but even then you have to like jump and then... Yeah, you're not really going to be using them. It's there. They're purely just for combos and extending after you do dash-ins. And the follow-up of it is just, you know, very basic again. Gets a juggle. His... okay. His aerial tilt attack is actually a really good dive kick. It doesn't have amazing distance, but it looks really cool and it creates a lot of visual noise, so you can go... Visual noise is in, like, there's just so much on the screen, so you can go in for grabs, and it just looks really big and scary. So, that's really good, and you can sidestep it, go for an armor attack or whatever. But yeah, it's a decent dive, dive kick, has a decent hitbox, but nothing huge or ridiculous. His tilt attack on the ground is actually quite a really, really interesting tilt attack. One, it has probably the best range of any attack, any tilt attack, or armor attack, whatever you want, strong attack, whatever you want to call it, in the game. It can reach from like all the way over here, he just like teleports in, and then rapid kicks you from all the way across the screen. It is ridiculous. It does have a very long charge up time to get, you know, the fully charged one where it's unblockable. But what makes what um, what it loses in long charge up time, it makes up for in the fact that it is ridiculously long range and you can combo off of it for free. You can just dash up for free on this thing and get a combo going it. So it's really really amazing. And that's really handy for a poor, the poor demons who, you know, when you do it an armor attack as a demon, you can't call out a support to cover you, so you want to make sure your armor attack's really good, and Akaza does have a good armor attack. So you can dash in, get a combo. Unfortunately, because it's a red combo, you're not really going to get too much. Um, I found the most you're going to get, like if you want to get your Annihilation, you can get something like that. A lot of the time I like to just go for a reset off of this since you're not going to get much damage anyways. Like just do one punch and then go in for a grab as they fall and then they're standing there blocking. And as you can see, if they do fall for that reset, you're getting a big chunk of damage. So that's like nearly half of their health from that. So it's far better to go for resets in that scenario um, off of your strong attack. Uh, his grab is... Pretty average. It has not super small range like um, Water Tanjiro, but nothing huge like Nezuko. Like it reaches around this distance. Yeah, so it's got pretty decent range. You don't have to worry about it missing too much, but um, it's also not ridiculously huge. And luckily now, it has been buffed that it does give a hard knockdown and it has pretty decent damage. I think it's the second highest group of damage in the game, which he used to have like the lowest damage grab. So this is really handy for him. Um, because his pressure used to not be really good because he barely guard broke the opponent at all. But now if the opponent's guarding stuff, his grab is actually a really big threat because it actually does a really big chunk of damage. And if you go into boost mode, I don't usually show this stuff now, but if you're in like boost or even surge, the damage on this thing is ridiculous. Especially against people with lower health like demons. Um, yeah, but good grab, and because it gives you a hard knockdown now, um, it used to just have the opponent bounce up instantly and you were neutral on, on hit, but now because the opponent is knocked down on the ground for a little bit of time, you have time to dash in and be on top of them before they wake up. Oops, I missed time I dash. Or you have time to start throwing out projectiles or whatever, it's just good to have a little bit of time before the opponent wakes up to get onto them, so that you have a bit of advantage after doing your grabs. So you get good damage and you get some advantage, so that's a big buff for Rukaza because he used to not. Um, is that all of his regular things? We still talked about the tilt attack. Um, yeah, okay. Now his special moves. His standing special, destructive death air type. These are his projectiles. I'm sure you know about them. Uh, if you press the button once, he only throws he only throws three projectiles. But if you press it a few times or mash it or press it twice, he'll throw five, and it does a bit more damage. But it actually gets really interesting depending on the amount of projectiles that you throw. So if you throw three of them, you can actually cancel at any point into your destructive death, which is really handy because if you're just throwing out projectiles and you see that they're hitting, you can be like, oh, okay, let me get a combo for that. And get a big chunk of damage off of my projectiles. Like, hit confirming a projectile into a half health combo is really ridiculous in this game. And you can do it at, at, at any point, but usually 
you, I would imagine you'll just do it off of all three of them, because then you get more damage and more time to hit confirm. And the same applies in the air. Doing three of them, if you see they hit, you do have to be a little bit closer for that, but um, it's really handy, because he, when he does the special in the air, he flips himself upside down. So it's almost impossible to anti-air him out of this, because a lot of the time when you're in the air, the opponent can still hit you. Like, if I'm doing stuff like this, if I'm just, like, popping around in the air doing, I don't know, attacks, the opponent can usually anti-air you, like, accidentally by pressing buttons. Sabito is not being a very good example of that. But a lot of special moves, like water wheels and regular attacks, will just hit you out of the sky. And, yeah, see, like, I tried to do my destructive death disorder there, and I get hit out of it, and the dashes hit me out of it, so a lot of things in the air, you get anti-edge, but his projectiles in the air, because he flips upside down, he's so high in the air, that he basically counters anything the opponent's doing on the ground, and if I hit, as you can see here, you can get a combo for it. That's all I was trying to show. Stop attacking me, Sabito. Um, yeah, so the projectiles are really good in the air, and once again, if you just get the three, three first ones and you see that they hit, then you can go into the, that and get a combo for it. Get something you don't have to use your collapse but you can get some decent damage anyways and if you throw all five you know obviously you're going to get more damage but you actually can't cancel the last two into any special move i'm mashing buttons now and you, as you can see my special moves only come out afterwards um i mm, i should rephrase <laughs> you can cancel after the last one but not in between the last two so the fourth one is just stuck like that but after the fifth one, you're never going to get any of your basic special moves because it launches the opponent too far away. But because you can cancel it into other special moves, the one thing that will hit is your Annihilation. So if you do see that you've thrown out your projectiles and you're like, oh crap, they're all hitting, even after the fifth one, you can do your Annihilation and anywhere on the screen, you can get a combo from your projectiles, which is kind of so ridiculous that you can just be throwing out projectiles and then the opponent just happens to get clipped by like one or two of them you go in for annihilation and they lose not a huge amount of damage it scales quite a bit from the fifth projectile but the fact that you're able to combo off of all of these projectiles from full screen is really really powerful okay so yeah usually you're going to combo for the three of them because then you can combo into your rapid punches but if you do happen to accidentally do all five combo into your annihilation and in the air, you can't combo into your annihilation, so usually you only want to do three in the air. Unless you're just really far away and you just want to throw projectiles to get some damage and just annoy your opponent, then do all five of them. Now his tilt attack, his destructive death disorder, is a really, really awesome attack. And just like, I didn't mention it for the projectiles, but all of his special moves really play into his ability to move around the map and control space really well. Because as he's like, you know, doing these jump side steps that everyone loves to do for, and dashing in quickly because he's such a quick dash. Throwing in these destructive death disorders, which is like instantly dashes in and does like 50, 100 punches and then you can cancel it into pressure and stuff. It just makes his neutral situation so much scarier than other characters. Because he can just at any point pop this and then he's in on the opponent. And the, the, the thing is, unlike a, um, like... The projectiles, which don't give you too much reward unless you, you know, choose to cancel it into other stuff and it even scales a bit there. Doing this, this leads to optimal damage combos. It is completely, like, safe to do on block, even if the opponent is guarding. Um, if the opponent guards it, it doesn't matter. You can cancel, go into some grabs, you can cancel it. You can even just run away if you want. Like, just jump out of it. It's cancelable at any point, so you can either do the whole thing or you can cancel it early for a bit of mix. Like go like something like that or if you're further away and then jump run away you can do literally anything it's so safe it's such high reward and it's so scary that it can just pop out at any time it's just a ridiculous special move and obviously you're going to be using it in your combos as well because it does really decent damage so off of a basic bnb combo you can do something like this oops you don't want to finish with that but uh, as you saw even that was 3500 that's some good damage to your combo, and if you're comboing off of it, just go into this, your compass needle, or you can even just dash cancel it to go into the air a lot quicker if you want to end your combo like this. If you have barely any combo meter and you want to build some meter, you'll get a bunch of meter back for that. Really, really good stuff. It's a really scary special move. And in the air, it actually starts combos for free. 
because it bounces the opponent, and that's really, really awesome. So it's, it has a very similar range. It is a little bit shorter, so see how it reaches here and a little bit past here? Okay, not too much past. There we go. Um, the air version actually won't go that far. Oh, it did. I, I eat my words. It does reach really far, but when you are at the far range of the aerial version, your attacks can be a little bit finicky on hitting the opponent, because they're just too far away and then your attacks move. But even if that happens, you can just um, dash cancel, and then go back up in the air, and then get your combos going this way. So, very amazing that you can use that to combo off of this, or just to throw it out in the air, because doing something in the air is even safer than doing it on the ground, because there's a chance that your opponent's attack will go underneath you. So just throw that out and you get a free combo if it manages to hit, so it's even better than the ground version, honestly. Ground version is a lot better for, you know, throwing into your movement and stuff, but if you throw that and then go in for this, if it hits, cool, you get a combo if you don't suck like me. And if it's blocked, then whatever, just de cancel it into a sidestep or something. Super safe. Okay, now his guard special, his compass needle, has been buffed significantly, and it's a very interesting special move. So it's not invincible like most characters' guard specials, but it can act like a reversal because it freezes time on the opponent where they are. So where Sabito is attacking me, if he's doing anything other than standing there and blocking, when my foot hits the ground, he could have blocked there because he could have cancelled his run into a block. But if he's doing anything like that, he gets frozen in time and I get to get a full combo on him. This used to give you a red combo, but now it actually gives you a full orange combo, so it gets some really good damage. That was a random combo, I wasn't even thinking about what I was doing there, and that was even good damage. Um, and you can... Okay, I'm gonna stop Sabito there, please. <laughs> and not only does it give you an orange combo, it starts combos for free. And it's one of those awesome launches that lets you dash up on the opponent. So yeah, I could just do a combo like this and, you know, use the bounce to get a combo going like this and go... Yeah, stuff like that. But I can actually just mash the dash button and I dash up for free. It doesn't cost me any extra meter. So it can just lead to awesome high damaging combos where you go into the air, onto the ground, which are usually the most damaging combos, and you can do it for free, so it leads to awesome combo potential, it does more damage than it did before, it leads to longer combos than it did before, it's just really amazing. But do keep in mind that it is not an instant startup, it doesn't freeze the game instantly. The Sabito will only freeze within the circle, and only when your foot hits the floor, so it is very easy to interrupt, as you see if I like, do it here. Oh, well, he was <laughs> didn't actually hit me there. But if I try and do it here, if the opponent hits me in between me starting it up, or if he's not being bad, it, it is easy to interrupt. As you saw there, the compass came out, but the time didn't freeze, so you have to wait for his foot to hit the ground, and it's not instant. So you do have to be about careful when you use it, but it can be a really good um, punishing tool. So if I... rude. <laughs> if I do something like this, and... That usually may not have been punishable, but because I froze time on his recovery frames and he was stuck in that pose where he's got his sword out, I was able to punish it. In that example, I would have been able to punish it, but in certain situations, you can't punish things that you wouldn't have been able to punish before, which is really, really cool. And... But do keep in mind, if the opponent is just dashing in, or they do something and then they end up blocking, it is very punishable, because if I get Sabido to just block here... I'll do my backflip and I can't cancel that into anything and I just die. It's very punishable, very, very, very. It's impossible to not punish it if the opponent blocks it. So do be careful. But what is handy is that it actually does have, as soon as my foot hits the floor, this whole period of time here, if the opponent walks into the circle, they will get hit by it. So if they're doing a special move that launches them into there, I'll try one more time to see if I can get Sabito to do it. But if he does end up going into the circle while it's there, like, even if it starts while he's outside of it. Let me get out of my circle. If he walks in halfway through it, he will get hit. Or he can just not do anything and then ruin this example. But yeah, if the opponent walks into it, it's, yeah, they get hit by it. And you get a combo. That's all it is. And it's very good for combos because you can cancel it off of stuff like this. And if you're close enough, you can cancel it off of your projectiles as well. You can get a combo like this. get a cheap combo off of your projectiles, and you can use it to combo off of your destructive death really, really nicely. Dash up, get some stuff, go for a reset if you want, do whatever you like. 
Okay, those are all of his special moves. Oh no, he's got demon skills. So, his demon skill one, collapse, is literally just a huge damage special move. It's kind of like Rengoku's um, fire tiger, whatever that's called, where in the amount of damage that it does. It's just a big chunk of damage you do at the end of combos, and because it only does two hits, you only need a little sliver of combo meter left when you can pop this, and as long as it's not like already hit zero, you'll be able to get both hits and you'll get a big chunk of damage. You do want to make sure you get the second hit because that's where the big chunk of damage comes from. But yeah, let's do a combo and show how much damage you can get from the end of combo using it. So as you can see, this combo meter is getting a bit low here and there was only a little bit left, but I want, don't want to leave it too small, but it can be pretty little. And then I just pop it in the random wherever I want in the middle of my combo. And then I get a nice big, big juicy chunk of damage for combo. And what is handy is like you can cancel it in the middle of basically anything. If I see my combo's about to end, I'm like, oh crap, I better pop this before the combo's over and my counter runs out. And you get a big chunk of damage at the end of your combo and that's literally this special move. It's punishable on block, it's not invincible, you can dodge things with it, but I wouldn't suggest, you know, using it in neutral for no reason. Um, wow, it actually does some pretty good chip damage, huh? Wow, that is really, really amazing. So if your opponent's low on life and you're trying to chip them out, maybe you're going to go for a boost anyways. You can go for this and, like, take a big... Look, Sabito was blocking that entire time. Whoa, how can ridiculous can this get? Wow, that's pretty ridiculous. Yep, good chip damage too, but it is punishable, and you don't really want to use it because you can't combo off of it. Like, you don't want to use it in neutral. It's literally just a combo ender. Now, here's Annihilation. Is, I mean, I'm sure we've all seen it. He dashes all the way across the screen, punches the opponent, they go into a crumple state, and you can get combos from it. However, it has been nerfed, and now it's a red red combo, so you can't really get too much, you know, except for a little short combo. Um, but it's still very useful. You can get big damage if you want to cash out off of it. And just the fact that it's an armored full screen special move, so it's like an armored dash, that it is advantageous or block as well. It's just a big, big, chunky special move that if you want to go through, if someone throws a projectile, just armor through it. If someone has a... Unfortunately, if someone throws a support, you will get, like, stuck in front of it, so it is really annoying, and it doesn't have the best tracking. So mainly, you just want to use it if you want to counter a projectile or just get in on the opponent pressing buttons or something, because it is armored. And there, you can go for an ultimate or whatever after it's. Now that we've gone over all the special moves, speaking of ultimate... This is what his ultimate activation looks like. He just does this massive flying kick. Actually, let's test how far it goes. I'm pretty sure it goes really decently far. Well, it's not huge, but basically any way you're going to use it in a combo, it's going to combo pretty easily. So, a nice activation. Awesome animation, obviously. <laughs> Good damage and it leaves you really close to the opponent so you can go for a wake up grab if you step in a little bit closer or a wake up armored attack whatever you like <clears throat> in boost mode his combo ender it's pretty cool unfortunately it doesn't give you much advantage or leave the opponent beside you so it's not a really good advantageous ender it just gives you a bit more damage so if you want to do a cheap combo like this do something like this so this is only costing me one bar, and it's like ooh, almost half of the opponent's health. That is really ridiculous. One bar for the, all that, it's really awesome. So when you're in boost mode, you can just get super cheap combos, and then just spend your meter on special moves, whatever you like, and it'll do a bunch of damage as well. And in surge mode, I mean, there's nothing new to talk about in surge mode, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Basically just going to be mashing special moves like you always are. do something like that if you like okay I think that's basically it for all of his his toolkit he's got um, I guess I'll quickly mention his movement but yeah he's got an awesome dash speed like I said his jump sidestep is really good it has a great distance and it keeps him in the air for a decent amount of time he kind of does a side side flip and then falls down um, so it keeps him in the air for a while it's a great dodge and it has a really good distance unlike some characters so it just adds into his great movement his great jump Great dash in, great sidestep, great movement with just destructive death, and then with all this great movement, 
you can also cancel, you know, jump sidestep into a projectile in the air, which is kind of ridiculous and crazy, or jump sidestep into, like, you can do jump sidestep into these, so you, like, jump back, dodge sideways, and then dash back in using these. It's, it's really ridiculous how much movement he has. Okay, so we've talked about all of his toolkit now, let's talk about combos and then we'll talk about pressure and mix-ups after that because I tend to get a little carried away and talk about those a little bit too early. So combos. With Akaza he's very combo free and if you just take in like just a few principles or guidelines you can basically do whatever you want. So basically whenever you land destructive death disorder you're going to be going into your compass needle and then off of your compass needle you usually just want to dash in, get some aerial attacks, and then go for a combo on the ground, and depending on how much combo meter you have left, so if you've maybe done a few hits like this and you don't have too much combo meter, you might go for a reset here. Or if you have a decent amount of combo meter and you've started your combo with your punches like this, you can just go in and end your combo like this, and just get a good chunk of damage for only two bars, and you build back your meter quickly because you didn't end with a special move. So that can be really good. Or whenever you like, obviously, you also have the option to end your combos with your Annihilation. Oh wait, is it? No, Collapse. And that just adds a huge chunk of damage to the end of your combos. And those are literally the only things you have to take into account. Or actually one more. You can also choose to end your combos in, so if he's airborne. Oops. My opponent's airborne, and I am like really low on meter, say I've spent a lot of meter on projectiles. Dashing in and ending your combos in your aerial attack string allows you to build a lot of meter. And there are two main ways you can do this. You'll actually get more meter if you do a dash in, just to, um, no, if you dash cancel one of his special moves. So if, say if the opponent's already in the air and I've done this, and I'm just comboing like do 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 do, and then dash in and go like that. That'll let me build the most meter. I think you can build back about four bars or maybe three bars before the opponent even wakes up. So you can build a lot of meter that way. Or just after your compass needle, just dash in and do this. And then you get to build back around two, maybe three bars before the opponent wakes up. So just deciding to do that whenever you realize you're a bit out of meter can be really handy. So see, I'm ending my combo. I'm like, oh, I actually want some meter now. And my combo, oops, I did a little bit slow there. You want to make sure you get the hard knockdown and the combo counter isn't all the way gone. See, that's a decent chunk of damage and I get to build back a bunch of meter for it. And if it, you know, you're getting something off of this, you can just choose to let your combo end early. You'll get a bunch of meter back for that because you didn't even spend anything. And yeah, that's basically his combos. So I'll just show you what combos can look like off of certain things. If you throw projectiles and you realize that, oh, they're hitting. Go into rapid punches, go into your compass needle, dash in, and get some kind of ender. You don't have to use your collapse, but if you want to get a big chunk of damage, obviously you'll use it. Um, if you want to have a cheap combo and you are close enough, you can go for your compass needle and just go for a simple combo like this. That's decent damage for only two bars off of a projectile conversion. If you land your random rapid punches, obviously you can go into your compass needle. And you can even do something like this if you want to build some meter. That's a decent chunk of damage. And you get to build back a bunch of meter. Or you can end it, you know, for extra damage by spending a ton of meter. Maybe if you're going to boost soon, you can do something like this. Oops, I did that a little bit this time. Or you can even do it a little bit different like this. That's a big chunk of damage, and if I boost afterwards, I get all that meter I spent back. If you land five projectiles and you want to combo off of that, you can use your Annihilation, get something like this. Get a combo going, you're not going to get too much damage, but you can basically just do whatever you want after the Annihilation. If you want to keep it cheap, you can, but where's the fun in that? See, you could do something like this, but you've got a bunch of combo meter left, so you may as well spend an extra bar in there somewhere for fun. If you, yeah, as we said, if you get a combo off of your armor attack, you can either, what I like to go through is just go for a reset like this, because that's the most damage, because you're not going to get much combo damage. Um, see, like, that reset does so much damage. 
but if you do want to get just guaranteed damage, I guess you could do something like this. That does some decent damage, or maybe you can even get the last hit and get a little bit more. There you go. That's a decent chunk of guaranteed damage. Or, if you want to build some meter, say I've spent a lot of meter on, you know, projectiles or whatever, and I get this, it can also be worthwhile just leaving it, leaving it open and building back a ton of meter before the opponent wakes up. Look, my bars are almost full now, just because I did that. Um, if you get a straight combo off of this, honestly, the world's yours. You can do literally whatever the heck you want. <laughs> This is not an optimal combo, I'm just doing random stuff, just to show you, but you can do whatever. Build some meter back, or go for Annihilation for the extra damage at the end, or Collapse, whatever it's called. Uh, if you get a Tilt Attack in the air, you don't get too much damage, so like, maybe just go for a down combo, even though that's a little bit lame. Or go for a bit of a reset by doing... And then going in for a grab or something, I'm not sure, or obviously you can always cash out. Do that, that's a big chunk of damage for a short red combo. And honestly, that's about it combo-wise. And if you want to throw ultimates into your combos, it's very easy. You can just anywhere in your destructive deaths, if you end your combo like that, boom. Just throw in an ultimate instead of your collapse. Well, you would have thrown a collapse, just throw an ultimate. And yeah, he's a really easy combo character. You can just do whatever the heck you want. Just make sure you know what you're wanting to get. Like, oh, I want him to meet her. Let me end my combo like this. Get to meet her. Oh, I want him to end in an ultimate. Let me make sure I... Oh, don't do that. Go into an ultimate. Comboing an ultimate's really easy. You can even combo off of your projectiles if you want. But yeah, Akaza's combos, they're pretty simple. They're very flexible. Just gotta make sure if you wanna cash out at the end, throw your collapse. If you wanna build some meter, just do your aerial attack string and go for resets in short combos, and that's about it. You're gonna get awesome damage from everything, so just make sure you're actually doing stuff. That's <laughs> as long as you do something, you're gonna get good damage of the Kaza. Now, for something that's a little bit more interesting, let's talk about some pressure. So I have Sabido set to guard after the first hit here. So, on a blocking opponent, you have a few options for mix-ups. So see all this, this, his destructive death disorder puts like so much like dust on the screen, it's so hard to see. So it's perfect opportunity to throw in a grab afterwards. If you dash cancel it and then go in for a grab, you get a big nice chunk of damage on a poor blocking opponent and depending on how close you are to the opponent and when you're doing these you can even do it before the end because the opponent's expecting you know your whole special move to come out because they don't think you're an idiot they think you'll do the whole thing but if you actually cancel it early you know you haven't even done the whole special move and all of a sudden they're getting hit by a grab and they're like whoa I wasn't expecting that you can actually cancel it like really early if you want to really catch someone off guard like just do like two punches and then you can cancel into a grab it can be really really scary and obviously, like I said, his attack string is really good for pressure because he moves in so fast. So even if the opponent is guard pushing you away, um, you know, you'll dash in with a slide. And if they do seem to be pushing you away and jumping away, whenever you think they're going to push and jump away, just go for your destructive death annihilation. If Sabito pushed and jumped away there, he'd get hit by the destructive death disorder. I keep messing up my words. But he'd get hit by this and I can get a full combo from it just because he was trying to run away. Or if I think the opponent's going to try and jump or do something to interrupt me, if they try to do an invincible special move, I can stop it and cancel it on the spot by freezing them in time with this. He's just so good at pressure, and um, because his grab does damage now, almost anything you do, like whether it's these projectiles, which are really good to be cancelled in the middle of, you can cancel any of them and go for a grab in the middle, or you can go for this and then cancel in there and go for a grab. He's, he's really scary. He's really scary when it comes to a blocking opponent. Cancel his projectiles, cancel his punches into a grab, and now all of this stuff actually does more guard damage as well. So the opponent's guard will get dwindled down a lot more easily. His projectiles even do guard damage. If you spent a bunch of meter, you can do something like this to build it back. 
But uh, yeah, he's very scary on guard. And something I did want to mention about his projectiles, um, as pressure tools, they're actually all frame traps. So if you don't know what a frame trap is in this game, um, I'll get Sabito to do like a regular full attack string on me. Will I? So if the opponent just does like a bunch of attacks in a row, I'm re you can release guard, but that you're still forced to be in a guard position. So I'm not holding guard anymore, but my Akaza is still guarding. That's the point of the, the push thing, so that cancels your attack string and then you can release release guard. But I'm not holding guard anymore, and I'm still guarding. But things with enough of a gap will allow you to release guard in the middle. And where that becomes interesting is if the opponent is just mashing on block. So if I block the first thing that he does, I'm mashing buttons now, and I get to punish him now, and I didn't awkwardly get hit by the middle of that, because I'm locked in guard stun. So I'm just mashing buttons this entire time, just waiting for there to be a gap, and I get to punish him whenever he's finished. That seems kind of ridiculous, right? But if the opponent has anything that has a bit of a delay or a gap in it, then I will awkwardly try and punch in the middle of it, but because these projectiles are still coming out, or because the punches are still coming out, they'll get interrupted and they'll just release guard like an idiot and start getting hit. All of these projectiles have enough of a gap that they're each a frame trap. So if the opponent is just you know, guarding at the beginning and they're just mashing buttons, because you know, if they're mashing buttons now, nothing's going to happen unless they push guard. Um, but if they mash buttons during my projectiles, they actually will be able to start their buttons and then they'll get hit by the projectiles because, you know, I'm still doing them. And then if I do see that they get hit, then cool, I get to go in for a combo and that just makes them really awesome pressure tools. So if the opponent is guarding, it is really worthwhile going for your projectiles just to see if they're maybe they're mashing buttons or they're trying to just like jump away. If they're doing anything other than standing there and blocking or like pushing you away they're gonna get hit by your projectiles and that's really scary. And then combining that in with the fact that you can dash in and go for a grab off of them anytime, it's pretty ridiculous pressure. And yeah, that's about it for the pressure and mix-ups with the Kaza and I just realized I forgot to mention boost combos. Or I did briefly mention a boost combo before, but if you want to do something simple, you can do something like this. This only costs me one bar and does a huge chunk of damage. And then obviously all my regular combos like this are going to do more damage because I'm in boost mode. Like jeez, 5,000 damage for two bars? That's really good. And then in surge mode, um, Akaza it doesn't have as easy of a time as someone like Rengoku, but he can still be kind of ridiculous. Just do stuff like this, cancel into this, go into this, go into these again. Like, all those special moves, you're getting a big chunk of damage, and obviously you can throw in an ultimate at any time. But the fact that these massive pr thing, these massive punches and the projectiles are armored just makes for him to be ridiculous. And because his pressure is so awesome, it's really o easy to open people up when you're in surge mode. Because usually, you know, if they're just standing there blocking, you can c easily cancel your projectiles and go in for a grab. And grab does huge damage when you're in surge mode, as we talked about before. But, uh, yeah. I think I am done here. That is Akaza. He's a really awesome, fun character. He's got awesome movement. He's got really, really flexible, dynamic combos where you have just able to really cheaply and easily combo into any kind of ender you want, whether you want to get meter back or a big chunk of damage with your collapse. He can move around super easily, he can control space really easily with his projectiles and his destructive death disorder. And he's got really, really awesome pressure by using his, um, you know, awesome attack string which slides in on the opponent, being able to cancel his rapid punches into a grab at any point, and his frame trap projectiles, which are really awesome for A, just being a frame trap, and also being able to be cancelled into a grab. He's a really good all-rounder character, and he's probably one of the strongest demons of the game. Besides maybe Enmu, because he's ridiculous. But that's Akaza, he's a really awesome character. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown for him. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye Let's throw an ultimate end. Never mind, let's throw an ultimate again.